Hey guys, in this video we'll be showing you all of the cut essentials or cut essentials that you need to get before you get your very first cut. Uh, in our example, we'll be using Ragnos, some things will be uh, specific to Ragnos, uh, others uh, are universal for all of the cuts. Uh, so let's dive right into this. We'll start with food bowls. Uh, we got these just from TK Maxx. Um, so we've got a grey and a pink one, um, perfect for a boy and a girl, and they have a really cute design as well. These are ceramic and you can also put them in the dishwasher if you want to. Um, the best thing to get is either ceramic or stainless steel bowls. Uh, the plastic ones are not very great uh, just because they do allow bacteria to grow very quickly. Uh, whereas these ones are a lot easier to clean um, and more hygienic. Uh, we put them on a placemat as well, which is really important to have too, especially if we feed either raw or wet food, um, because the cats will make a little bit of a mess around, and it's obviously a little bit easier to clean it up from a placemat. We went for a silicone placemat, again, just because it's the easiest one to clean. You can literally just use like a cloth with water. Or you can pick it up, up and put it in the pick sink. Pick it up, put it in the sink. Um, wash it with a sponge. It's very easy. Hello, my bowl is empty. Please, can you fill up my bowl? Oh, oh, <laughs> he's fighting microphone. And while we're here, we can talk about the fountain. And uh, this one is from Catit. We also got this little placemat as well, just in case any spillage occurs. Um, this is really, really good. It's got a filter inside and it fits up to two liters of water, so quite a lot. Um, and you only need to clean it up once a week. So it filters the water, it's all fresh. Um, you don't have to worry about it being stagnant or cleaning up the bowl every single day. The filter should be replaced once a month. Um, you can order them on Amazon or from a cottage website. Um, and why it is good is because the water is moving. So it is more appealing to the cat. It's more like fresh water from the stream. And it's oxidizing, so it seems uh, quite excessive. Yeah to start with to get one of these because uh, they could as well just use a simple bowl uh, but they, they seem to prefer it um, and yeah. uh, it's an investment that's gonna last you over time so uh, yeah. it's really good it's also stainless mine. steel so uh, very safe yeah and cleaning is super easy very inconvenient of course this is not where the litter tray normally is um, but that's for the display. Um, this one is also from Catted, and by the way, this video is not sponsored by Catted, <laughs> would be nice. Um, we went for this one because it's a really big one. It's called a jumbo litter tray. <laughs> jumbo um, litter tray. Sorry, it's all the poop. <laughs> jumbo litter box. It's a box. Um, it's really good. It's got a handle. Not that you have to move it around much, but still. Um, you can close it. Um, but you can also keep it open this way. Um, Blubble is very interested. He's literally looking at it as if he's seen it for the first time in his life. Uh, it's got these locks on the sides, uh, so you just move them, then lift up the top to clean it up. Cleaning up is really, really easy. So what we do, we just uh, throw away all of the litter, then put some water, a little bit of bleach, mix it together, wipe it with a cloth or or a sponge and then rinse it and then repeat it again clean it dry it and it's do make sure it. that you rinse it really really well though oh yeah like, of course you don't want it to smell of bleach yeah um and in case if you're worried about bleach being unsafe um it's literally just a tiny bit of bleach mixed with water and then we rinse it very well so um there's nothing wrong with that and it just cleans it up very nicely yeah it removes um, the bacteria because you know it's one just emptying that but uh, if you don't clean it properly the bacteria still grows yeah exactly um, in terms of what litter tray or litter box to get uh, there is this common mi misconception that cats like privacy when they're pooping but they actually couldn't care less honestly so <laughs> this speaking from experience <laughs> this sort of design it's only for humans. It's us that just don't want to see the cats pooping and peeing. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend the boxes that have this entrance from the top. They're not very convenient for the cats to get in and out. So this design, if, if you want something covered, this design is really nice. And there is a lot of similar ones on the market. And this one actually has a filter that uh, helps with the smell. Just goes at the top here. And you can buy spare ones from again from catted website or oh, probably from like different websites i don't know 
We got some from Amazon recently, so this is called Magic Blue Fit Filter. And to start with, I actually didn't know if it will work. Um, it's supposed to help with the ammonia um, scent, smell. It's supposed to help. <laughs> I don't think it's a scent. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of how many litter trays to get, it will definitely depend on the cats themselves. Uh, the rule of thumb is basically number of cats plus one. Uh, we live in a small flat, we have two cats and we only have one litter box and so far so good no problems with that they absolutely fine using one of them if we had a big house we'd probably get another one. Oh yeah we but, definitely uh, would they can literally get to the litter box within 30 seconds from like the furthest part of the house yeah, so, so it's no problem if you have different levels in the house i would definitely recommend having like one on each level at least so they don't have to worry about getting to the litter box or litter tray in terms of the litter, we're using a Breeders Select Cat Litter. Uh, this is the one that we got from the breeders to start with, so that's the one that they have been using since they were little. And that's something we would definitely recommend. So if you're thinking about getting a cat, definitely ask your breeder what cat litter they're using and start with them off on that one and then mix Slowly in Slowly transition into the one that you actually you want them like to be on. To use. Uh, this one is recycled newspapers, so that's something that definitely um, was very appealing to us. Um, and it's non-clamping, so again, that would be a personal preference if you want clamping with litter or not. Uh, once when we ran out of this one, we bought a different one, which was like a fine clamping with litter, and we didn't like it, and cats didn't like it. Yeah, because so it was sticking to the paws as well. It was sticking to the paws, and like in between and it was actually quite sad because they mm. couldn't get it out we had to help them out like clean their paws and the tracking yeah. was horrible the litter was everywhere so obviously when they jump out of their litter box some of that will come out um because these are like pellets so similar to like wood pellets that you can get as well they're quite large so even if some of it comes out on the floor you can easily see it and just pick it up. Uh, whereas if it's like a fine dust, yeah, litter, it was like a, it was like a sand or even dirty. finer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's I don't know if that's like a thing that ragdolls have or is it all the breeds. But these guys have really long, tufty toes. So right here, you can see they're so big. Mm -hmm. So that's why this really fine uh, clamping uh, litter was sticking to them. Uh, yeah. So that might be a little bit ragdoll specific. Yeah, like long haired cars will have those paws, yeah. so uh, maybe that's that. So definitely try out a few different ones if you don't like the one that your, breed your breeder was using or um, if you don't know what your cats have been using before they came to your house, then obviously just try whatever appeals to you. Some people use uh, scented litter. We found that this one covers the scents pretty well so um as long as you clean it regularly you should be fine with any litter yeah. really in terms of the smell so we just scoop out whatever is wet because it doesn't clamp you just have to scoop out like the pee um like the wet litter out of the litter box and then we just top it up and then clean the litter box probably once or twice a week you obviously need some scoops for your litter box. We have a toe just because, again, we use the non-clamping litter. So we have this one for pee and then this one for poop. So we can <laughs> scoop out the poop without scooping up too much of like unused, non-dirty litter. Um, and another great thing that we have is this little dustbin and brush. Uh, we got this one from Zoo Plus. It's very small, so it literally just slides next to the litter box, between the litter box and the wall. Um, and it's very useful to just like, um, get tidy up the stuff that's yeah. like on the floor loose litter off the floor um really handy thing to have moving on to the biggest thing that is a very essential for your cats is the cat tree um this one is from the brand called kotick and we actually have a video about it 
so we'll link it on the screen and you can go and watch it um but basically go for the best cutlery you can afford really uh, that will last you years um, definitely look for something that is very steady and doesn't move too much when the cats are jumping yeah on it. cats really don't like it if they jump on something and it's really flimsy this one you can see it's a really really stable pole and like all of the attachments are actually quite sturdy even though like this is just like a hammock attached to one place like it easily supports our cats and they obviously are quite heavy so uh, that's one of the things why cats don't use the cat trees so don't buy don't buy something too cheap that uh, you will have to upgrade soon and something that your cats just won't use and as you can see it's quite big look what it's just sitting <laughs> but there is a lot of space still at the top here um so we just went for a large one so when they actually adults they can still use it Apart from the vertical scratching surfaces, you will also need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for demonstrating. Scratching surface, perfect pixie, good timing. Um, so the best ones for these are just cardboard sc scratches. We found that our cats use them pretty much every time they wake up. Um, this one we've had for a few months, I think three or four months. I yeah, had to so it's pretty used up, but it's lasted pretty well considering how, how long we've had it for. Uh, we also did a whole video about this one, um, and it's fairly affordable for how long it's lasted. It's around £20 if I remember correctly. Uh, we'll link it up here somewhere, uh, so do take a look if you're looking for a scratcher. Yeah. So we have this one and we also have a couple like smaller ones around the house. We have one over there and then one next to the bathroom. Uh, they just like to sit on it sometimes and then scratch a little bit. So um, the little ones are very cheap. You can literally get them for like three or four pounds. So definitely get yourself a few of those. Pixie, you're doing a really good yeah, demo. She's, yeah, she's such a good demo, yeah. <laughs> they love to stretch out on it in the morning. Yeah, so that's why we also went for a long pole scratcher so that they can have a space to stretch out comfortably and sometimes climb up on it as well. Another thing we have here is cat grass. Um, you may not uh, think about it as an essential for your cat, uh, but especially for ragdolls that are mainly indoor cats, um, it is really nice to have something that will have them digest the fur that they eat while grooming themselves. And they eat a um, lot of it. <laughs> yeah, they eat a lot of it. We got some previously from the Zoo Plus. The packet was quite big and they didn't manage to eat all of it before it just died. And uh, this one is a lot smaller and I will have to look at the brand that we got it from. Uh, but it came in this little small plastic bowl. Um, so I just put it in a, in a pink just normal bowl <laughs> so it looks pretty and can just stand on the shelf uh, they like to munch on it from time to time and it definitely helps them uh, because I saw a green poop before so I think that means that they've been eating <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to watch our video on that um, the one that we got from Zoo Plus we will also link this one below um, and then there is more information there about why it's important also, pro tip, if you're going to buy the same one from Zooplus that we did, uh, split it into like two or three batches. So don't do the whole thing at the same time because yeah. it was way too big, even for two big right dogs. Yeah, definitely. No matter what cat you're getting, you will definitely need some brushes. We got this brush kit, which is for long haired cats. Um, so the version for short haired cats will have slightly different brushes. Oh, hello. Um, the one we probably use the most is this one, which is probably looking like your typical animal cat or dog brush. They haven't liked this one as much to start with because it does make noise and they were very interested um, in that one. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to bite it. But this one is actually really good and recently I've, I've started using this one a lot more because I feel like they do like the brushing of that it's one like is like massaging. This brush is for mats um, and it is not supposed to be used on ragdolls. Their fur is like the softest fur ever. So by using this, you can damage mm. their fur and actually yeah. get rid of too <laughs> much of it. So we never use this one and we're not planning, planning and to be on honest, doing it. If you it. brush a cat regularly, you, you should never have to yes. use it, I think. I mean, I don't have that much experience with like different cats than ragdolls. But uh, honestly, if you brush them, I don't know, even like once or twice a week, they should be fine. 
and this kit also comes with claw trimmers. Uh, this is definitely an essential. And uh, now, depending on your cat, um, they might not let you trim their claws on your own. Uh, some people I know that have to go to the vet to get the cat's claw trims, um, but um, our cats are very chilled and they don't mind it at all. So it's definitely good to have that at home. Again, hashtag not sponsored. This is from Catted, and we did a video on that as well um, about how we brush our cats. Um, in so terms, if you're new to brushing, then obviously check it out. Check it, it might out. give you some good hints and tips. Um, you can definitely create a kit like this on your own. There's loads and loads on Amazon that have great reviews, so definitely look this up as well. Um, in terms of frequency of brushing ragdoll cats, uh, recently we've been trying to brush them like five or even six times a week, so pretty much every day, uh, because they are shedding quite a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to winter, so there is a lot of... Uh, around the floor in the house and we need to hoover very often as well uh, but the fur is getting a lot like bigger and fluffier and it's just amazing so <laughs> yeah. i don't mind yeah it when you all. put your hand on the cat it just like like yeah. melts into it <laughs> yeah exactly so i'm not gonna lie if you're getting in a ragdoll cat then you will need to spend some time with grooming now this is not an absolute essential, but when you're getting a small kitten, they might get in trouble. Um, so I would probably advise getting um, a cat shampoo. <laughs> He's taking it. He's stealing all the toys. <laughs> oh God, Bluebell. <laughs> he landed on the bike. He's fine. <laughs> um, so I would probably advise getting a cat shampoo, just in case your cat gets really dirty and it's an emergency and you have to bathe them. Um, it's good to have it just in case. Then of course you need some toys. Um, so to start with I would just suggest getting some really simple ones. We've got some different bowls. Um, we have a few different mousies. These small ones are great for kittens. Uh, they do like to bite on them and they have catnip inside as well. And then this one, this is a bigger one. Bluebell absolutely loves it. It's a, <laughs> this one is actually from Poundland and I can't believe how good this is. So it's got like felt ears, it's got a feathery tail, a little bit of soft material here, and then this rope. So for a pound, that's everything your cat needs <laughs> for like 10 minutes of play every day. And then the favorite, the springs. These are, they probably work out at like 20p each or so. Uh, and they are absolutely amazing. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, my already got stolen. I think that's his favorite toy at the moment. It definitely is. He randomly finds one in the house and then it's playtime. Yeah, it's like he's never seen it before. And uh, then, of course, some um, one toys. And uh, this one is pretty complicated one. It's the Grumpy Cat one. Uh, so it's got a few different bits here. These have like crinkles. And our cats are not very fast on that. Apparently kittens go crazy for it, but ours just isn't. And then this part here has a bell and then a few bits hanging off. I'm pretty sure there was some more to the end. I think there was more. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone. Um, so we have a few uh, like this with different feathers, different ends on them. Um, but obviously you can definitely start with something like this or a smaller one just from a toilet roll or a paper bag. You can get it in pretty much any shop. Um, we just put this one here. So what I would advise to do is take off the handles because uh, when they play with it, they can get stuck. Um, we actually had it happen handles. once. And yeah, Bruno was just running with a bag on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was like, oh, it will be fine. And then he got literally just like stuck inside of it. Yeah. So it was his body, so it wasn't too bad. But like if the handles are too small, it actually can be quite dangerous if they put their head in it. So just um, rip them off. Obviously to start with, you don't need a bag as big. And uh, they are 11 months old now, so they get pretty big. Yeah, um, Bluebell was at vet uh, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and uh, he's uh, four kilo now. Yeah, I think he's, he's heavy. Yeah, he's probably more than that. <laughs> I picked him up uh, this morning and he's quite heavy. <laughs> he's quite heavy. So yeah, this is 
an amazing toy. <laughs> hey, Pixie. Uh, okay. Cuties. New toy we just discovered. Um, we went to Japan recently and we found those um, chair socks. So they're like actual socks that you put on the legs of your chairs. We thought it will make an amazing toy. Um, and now I also thought about putting some catnip inside of it. And it actually works so well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Maybe he'll finally stop biting my feet and he won't take care of them. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> Look at the poses. <laughs> wow, he's really trying. <laughs> he's so strong, he literally picked up the chair. <laughs> Obviously, you also need food for your kittens. Um, we feed our kittens raw food. We make it at home as well and we filmed a video about it too. Um, definitely do your research, whatever you decide on feeding your cats, make sure that you know what goes into it. And now, this is questionable because Matzit is not an essential either, but I think treats are definitely an essential. And we I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good <laughs> to like reinforce positive behaviour and teach your cat good behaviours. Uh, um, I probably use them more, not like teaching them good behaviours, but reward them for like me brushing them or <laughs> trimming their clothes. Okay, I think or he's just ready sometimes now. I just want to treat them. Um, so we get Cosma snackies, which are freeze dried pieces of meat. Yeah, so I these are really good because it's pure meat, nothing else. Yeah, so they can get uh, three or four, two to three times a day. You can treat your cat all the time. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so this is the last thing. This is where we're going to end. Um, and we need to give them a couple each because they're getting very excited for it at the moment. As you can see, Bluebell is already purring for his little treat. So we'll finish here and we'll see you in the next video. Bluebee. <laughs> I'm eating my fingers.